Um, I just hope you'll consider these things in your deliberations. Thank you. Thank you. Next opponent, please. Hello, uh, Senator Murphy and uh, Senators. Uh, I'm Steve Zabawa, Z-A-B-A-W-A. -A -A. I'm a car dealer in Billings, Montana, and a dad of seven uh, 19 to 28 year olds. Uh, I do not like the idea of this regulation of uh, uh, marijuana in our state uh, and definitely not taxing it. Uh, it's kind of a unique idea to tax an illegal drug. You know, if you think about it, uh, pot is illegal in the United States. And if our original referendum was being run right, we'd have about a thousand cards out there helping the people instead of 30,000 cards right now. Now, if you do your tax revenue based on 30,000 or 50,000 users, there's probably some pretty good dollars there that could help the elderly and the disabled and so forth. But if you do it off the thousand, not much revenue there, why go through all the headache of starting a new agency, collecting the money, holding people accountable, and going through this whole headache? So uh, I, I don't see where the money's at on the deal. I think, uh, Senator Lewis, I think we could probably spend better time increasing our current vices, taxations, and actually collect more money quicker, better, faster. Cigarettes, alcohol, gambling, the other things that are on the books right now. So that's one, one argument there. I'd like to think about that. Second argument would be to, uh, we're looking for tax revenue. Senator Lewis wants to raise more revenue to pay for more needs that uh, have been lined up here today. Well, how can we do that best? Uh, I've been in the state now 18 years, and I came from a state that had sales tax had state income tax, had uh, a few other things. We could eliminate state income tax, like Wyoming, and have sales tax. I think we'd generate a whole lot more money than trying to tax people that want pot. I, I think it's the wrong thing. I think it's the wrong way to move forward. And it's not a very good message that we're sending out in the state of Montana to the rest of the world that we want to tax pot. I mean, that's... Uh, that's a terrible message to our uh, children. It's a terrible message to the people that want to come to Montana to uh, buy their pot. You know, uh, I've got calls from relatives from North Dakota and other places and from some people down in Utah that they want to come to Montana, use my address, get a card, buy their pot, plants, and, and take care of their $200 a month addiction. So I don't think, uh, you know, this is far impacting by starting a legalization of marijuana. Now, the bigger problem is at the end of the next two years, in 2012, there's a presidential election, a governor election, and all that stuff in another session here. What happens if we get a Republican president the next round, and he calls the attorney general, and they say, let's, uh, let's go into Montana and start indicting people for selling marijuana, but we don't want to be part of this. This is an illegal drug, and it's, it's being taken far beyond what we're supposed to. I, I don't know how that impacts us. So starting legalization of marijuana, which we've already done in the state of Montana, where are we going to go with this thing? This is a can of worms that is far, far reaching. And uh, it's impacting my family. I've got one of my seven kids that smoked pot for the last five years, and he started at 16, and he was ADHD. So he would qualify for a card. And he did it to medicate himself. I thought he was doing it just to make me mad, but that wasn't the case. He uh, stayed true to his word the whole time, and he was trying to offset the effects of uh, Adderall and Ritalin that he was taking. And he felt that was the best thing for him. He dropped out of football, dropped out of church, uh, dropped out of our family, uh, did not move forward in his life at all. And then uh, recently he got stopped and scared him to death by a police officer, and uh, he hasn't smoked in six months. Now, it just happens that he's rejoined our family. He's gone to the dean's list at the university now. He's working in the governor's office at the University of Utah, and he just got elected as a, a, a person in the, in the fraternity. And all this stuff was being held back because he thought he was doing the right thing, medicating himself. But he did not have a psychiatrist or a doctor or a pharmacist or anybody telling him which strain to use and, and how to do it right. The FDA hasn't legalized this thing yet and monitored it. So my, my point is, why does the state of Montana think that we can regulate uh, a drug when the FDA has a tough enough time doing it and they've got 
ten times more resources and history and understanding of drugs and the impact none of our doctors are trained on marijuana which doctor do you know in the state of montana knows all the strains the potencies and understands how to give out a card or a prescription and i don't know one i don't know very many pharmacists that really understand the impact here but yet we have a, someone that can get a card by breathing on a mirror and actually can hand out drugs to people and say this is the right drug for you and most of those and some of them are felons okay so i'm just I'm appalled that we've allowed ourselves to open this can of worms. We got duped in 04. Let's not get duped again. And so repeal the deal is the secret. And uh, I strongly uh, do not tax marijuana. This is crazy. And if it's really run right and regulated right, there wouldn't be a tax base there anyway to make it worth our time. So that's my point. Thank you. Thank you. How, how